Okay, I'm just going to talk you through um, how we could go through a lab in the um, Immersive Labs platform. This um, is a little bit daunting when you first start, but nothing that you can't handle. And I know from the little practice session we did um, for the about 15 minutes, um, you know, about three or four of you have managed to get through at least sort of half a lab. So once you get the hang handle of it, it's actually a really nice platform. What I'm going to do is just log out um, to start with so that you can see when you get there, you need to type in your email address and your new password and click sign in. And once you're signed in, I get this because I've been practicing some labs and all this sort of stuff. I can't remember what you'll see. You might well see the browse button here, which is the shows you all the different labs. And I don't get too worried about this. Remember, this is a platform that, um, you know, real grown ups, real cyber professionals use to get their skills. So some of these things you'll have no idea about. OK, so don't get don't get too worried. Feel free to scroll through and get interested in some of these things. Um, but bear in mind, some of them are, you know, uh, they take quite a long time and um, they're quite tricky. What you will have, though, is if you go up to the little bell icon, it gives you the messages and you should have a message. I've, I've read my message, but you should have a message that says two things. One is the actual competition, which is um, you, it's not open yet. So you click on it and you, you can't get into anything. But if you click on the unlock cyber competition preparation labs, it gives you <clears throat> some of the key labs. Here we go. A selection of labs you should try in order to prepare for the Unlock Cyber Competition. Now, I know there are lots of labs here. I think there are 15 altogether. Um, 12, 13, 14, 14 records there altogether. And you might be thinking, holy moly, how am I going to get through all of those? That's why I suggest you talk to your teammates and say, right, I'm going to look at you know, a certain lab, why don't you look at another lab? So agree amongst yourselves. And some of them naturally go together. So this supersonic one, I haven't looked at this. Um, I think you have to do episode one first, then episode two, then episode three. So do it in the order. Um, this PowerShell one probably goes together. The OS Int one um, probably goes together. I don't know. You could get a guidance from the number of points you get to how difficult it is. And also there's a difficulty rating here. Um, now, I'll try and go through some of these in uh, we'll, we'll do run some more sessions. So if you want to learn a little bit more, come along to the lunchtime sessions. Like I say, I'm not an expert in all of these by any means. But the one that I know James was trying and he was saying, Miss, I don't get any of it was this one called MSHTA. And I thought and it's you know worth quite a lot of points. It's a five difficulty. So if I walk you through it, that maybe should help you understand how um, a, a lab works and how um, you're supposed to put the answers in and, and the sort of thought processes behind doing it. So I've already completed it. Go me. Um, but I'm going to restart it again for you. So when you click restart, <clears throat> this is what's called a virtual environment. So it basically is, is booting up a separate instance of another computer. OK, um, it'll take a little bit of time. It's not too bad on my home computer, on my home network, but it's a little bit slower at school. Um, but while that's booting up, what you'll see is you'll see some buttons up at the top here. Ignore clipboard for the moment, but you've got tasks. And basically, it's just a, a series of, of questions. There's only five questions here, but you've got to find out the answers from this lab. Um, ignore network, I think, for the moment. You might need it for other labs, but I haven't come across it yet. Um, and then info is really important because it basically talks you through uh, what you're looking at. OK, the trouble is it does use some quite, um, you know, difficult, you know, new technology, not te terminology. So things like attack vector. So this is basically how the malware gets in or how um, how the, the system is being attacked. That's what it means by attack vector. Um, oh, my machine has crashed. Has my machine crashed? No, it's because I've moved to another screen. Right. So there's my mouse moving around. Now, what you'll see here on the left is something that looks a little bit like Windows. You've got icons and you can move them around and all this sort of stuff. But it's not Windows, is it? This is actually Linux. So for this particular lab, it's a um, version of a different operating system called Linux. If any of you have looked at Raspberry Pis, Raspberry Pi uses a version of Linux, so it might look familiar to you. Or Ubuntu is another operating system. The thing is, it's actually really easy to use. You know, it looks very similar to Windows. So you've got applications here, you double click on them. <coughs> you've also got like a little task bar down here. Now, if I go back to the tasks, Basically, it's saying open up the HTA found on the desktop. Now, if you double click on it, I mean, 
this is a bit of learning here. If you see something called malware, don't double click on it. Um, so and, and this is part of the reason they do these labs in a virtual environment so you don't mess up your computer or our school's computer. Um, so it's really good that we can actually have a go at this, um, you know, at all without getting into serious trouble. But um, as I explained to James, is rather than double clicking on it and what it will normally open in a, well, if it's, if it's an H, if it thinks it's an HTML document, like it says there, I'm just mousing over it. It will try and open it in Chrome. But what we're going to do is we're going to right click and choose open with and ignore Gini and Vim, but we just want to look at the text inside it. Okay, so when it opens up, you'll probably go, holy moly, I have no idea what that is. Now, I know because I was helping James with this, we he spotted that it was JavaScript and you can see it's JavaScript because there's a bunch of semicolons, there's some curly brackets in uh, yeah, there's some curly brackets in there. Uh, the, the thing that stands out for me is this thing called var, okay? So I know that in JavaScript um, you use these var keyword to set up a variable and I know that you don't use it in VBA or HTML and script, you know, that's a kind of dummy answer. So I know that the first question is what language is the script written in? We'll choose JavaScript. Now, apart from that, I have no idea what this is doing. It's because it's been obfuscated. Obfuscated is a great word, which means jumbled up. OK, so it doesn't it doesn't scramble it so you can't run it. It just jumbles it up so a human can't immediately read it. This is a classic thing that hackers do. They obfuscate their code. However, they've given us a website. You can tell it's a website because it's great HTTP. They've given us a website um, to de-obfuscate the code. So if I start up Chrome, now, this is actually called Chromium, but it's it's basically like Chrome. So if I type in now, the copy and paste doesn't always work. So I can try control C and I don't think that works. I can try doing copy and then oops, if I delete that and do paste. If that doesn't work, so it's not too bad. I'll just type this one in. <coughs> so HTTP forward slash JSD talks dot local colon 3000 okay and then we get this little website coming up um, so what I'm going to do is if I select all of this because we want to try and unscramble it and copy so I just right clicked copy and then right click and paste I'll paste it as plain text now I, I've never seen this site before but I basically press some buttons and try to figure it out um, if I click analyze it says error parsing JavaScript code. And that's because I left in these little script tags at the beginning. So, oops, so if I get if I get rid of that word script and the tags there, and at the end I get rid of the, there's another one at the end, bear with me, there it is. If I get rid of the script and the tags there, now that is just pure JavaScript. Those little script tags are actually HTML. If I click analyze again, here we go. Now what it's done is it's kind of, like formatted it a bit nicely. Okay, it's put all the var things on a separate row. There's a while true. So anyone who knows a bit of programming probably knows that that's a loop. Um, but still, I have still not a Scooby-Doo what that's doing. But I figured out if I go to execution. Oh, I can't remember. How, oh, no, I think I click the execute button up here. OK, and then there's a big warning saying try to call a window eval. That's basically saying it's trying to run some actual JavaScript um, code which could cause a problem. So the eval is, is a big flag to say this is an error. Um, if I click on show code, OK, now we're in English. OK, we've got try, we've got move to, we've got run. I can read these words, download. Oh, this all looks like a, this looks a bit better. What you then do, <laughs> and again, I had no idea what I was doing when I, oh, I did this. I just went around clicking things to see what it did. Um, so that's kind of the spirit of doing these labs is just try a few things. If you get confused, start again, try some other things. OK. Um, all right. So if I click send to analyze, it goes back into here. OK, still not perfect, but I can now do analyze again. So this is the second time, but with this code. And here we go. It's now um, it's now um, formatted it a bit clear, clearer. So now I can kind of see what it's doing. Now I know a bit of JavaScript, so we can see that this is trying to move. I think the cursor off the screen. So minus 100, minus 100 will be kind of up at the top left, so I can't see it. And then it resizes something to zero, zero. So it will be like 
invisible. And then it kicks off this thing called a shell, which is basically like a, um, it's a call to the actual windows to say, start running something for me. And then it tries to run something called PowerShell with a load of different flags here. Okay. And then there is some kind of executable there. So you might know that XE files are basically programs. So there's some kind of executable. I don't know what that code means, but there's some kind of executable. Then it's getting up a web client. So something that's going to open something on the web. And then it's downloading a file. And we've got HTTPS. So this, even though it looks weird, is down is getting something from a website okay and then it does some other things it loads a form it shows some information in a minute i might click on it just to see what it does okay but basically it's trying to download something from a website here and then run it i think i think it's trying to run it okay so let's have a look at something we might have some answers to our question so I'm going to ignore question two for a second, but I'm going to see, it says, what Windows executable does the malware spawn upon execution? Well, as I said before, this PowerShell, I mean, I can, um, can I demo one? This is my machine here, my home machine. But if I type in PowerShell, I just want to show you what Windows PowerShell is. If you've got a Windows machine, you might be able to see it. So this is like the command um, prompt. So I can run things like, um, I think it's DIR, and that lists all the directories in my thing. I can do CD and move to, if I wanted to go to, uh, what should we go to? I don't know, pictures. Let's see what I have. No idea what's in my pictures folder. And then I can do DIR. And then you can see all my pictures that are in there. Um, so a PowerShell basically gives me, gives you sort of command line access to the website. So that, there we go, is the answer to question three. What is the name of the executable that the file runs? Well, we already spotted it here. It's got .exe at the end. So if I copy that into there and paste that. And then question five is what is the full web address? So we know we spotted a web address here. It was that one there. Okay. Now this question here says what program proxy executes HTA files? Well, the clue is in fact this lab is called MSHTA and if we go to info it says that MSHTA.exe is a Windows utility that executes HTA files so if I go back to my tasks and type in MSHTA I mean you can see that I um, tried a few different because I wasn't quite sure on that one I tried a few different answers to see what it was so again, it's not the end of the world. If you get it wrong, it just tells you you've got one incorrect or whatever, and you can just try again. So if I click Submit, yay, I've got them all right, and it um, adds my points to it, okay? It hasn't added me any points because I've already done this one, okay? And then you can exit out of it and try another one. Okay, so that one was quite a difficult one. Nothing, um, you know, it took me a while to do it. So I, I do appreciate some of these will be tricky. I'm more than happy to help out. Um, but like I say, I've, I haven't done, um, <clears throat> I haven't done all of them. I've done the tweet one. That was quite fun. That was quite an easy one, I think. I've started, oh no, I did Windows Sysmon. That was quite an easy one, I think. Um, so have a go, share, share the task amongst yourself. Feel free to, you know, chat on the teams, you know, if, um, at the moment, I would say, let's not try and compete against each other. Let's try and share knowledge. And then on the day, we can compete against each other. Okay. All right. I'm going to end this now. Bye.